Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Good morning and welcome to uh, the lecture series Introduction to Interaction Design. So, in the last uh, lecture, we had seen uh, design and prototyping part 1, where we saw that what are the different uh, stages uh, required when we are uh, designing. So, starting from ideation to mode boards to low fidelity uh, prototyping, testing, and uh, other steps. So, uh, today we will be looking uh, at a case study. Uh, which will help us gain a better understanding of the steps that we saw in the uh, previous lecture. So, we will know that uh, how it will all come together. So, what is the role of mood board, how will it help in the final design or what are uh, you know how do you identify the user goals for example. So, now this is uh, a case study uh, where the website uh, design for promoting tourism in Uttarakhand was the given problem. So, this uh, work is uh, uh, was a part of submission for the subject interaction design, which is a subject in the uh, MDES course or master of design course in industrial design at IIT Roorkee. So, this submission was uh, given or submitted by my student Soumya Burman. So, I will also add a link uh, of this the Behance uh, link. So, you can also take a look at it later. So, now uh, here uh, Soumya started with understanding about the uh, Uttarakhand state and uh, that where is it positioned, what is it uh, known as like it is known as Devhumi, which is the land of uh, gods. And uh, the reason for that is because uh, it has a lot of these uh, pilgrim uh, spaces, pilgrim areas and sites. Uh, so, now this is the about information uh, because this particular app uh, deals with the website of Uttarakhand tourism. So, now the approach that uh, has been utilized here is the double diamond. So, we can see here that she uh, started with the problem space tourism Uttarakhand and then uh, researched more in the problem area. So, in the solution space, she discovered various possible outcomes and then narrowed upon one of the solutions. So, we will see that how she proceeded. So, in the primary uh, research uh, insight or the primary study, so she put together the popular adventure activities because this is for tourism. So, now there are various uh, activities uh, which come under tourism. So, there could be people who are just visiting for say uh, for pilgrims or they could be people who want to uh, come to Uttarakhand for some kind of sports activities which it is known for because there are high mountains and there are certain activities that may not be available in the rest of the country and especially where we have flat land. So, here we have uh, activities like trekking, paragliding, uh, zip lining, bungee jumping, uh, even safaris and uh, canoeing because we have uh, you know the Ganges uh, flowing. So, there is river rafting other activities happening here and then uh, so then she has put together them in the uh, in this graphical manner at the bottom on the left that how many you know what are the popular tourist spots in different parts of Uttarakhand. Uh, at the same time she has also conducted a study that what is the general stay period of visitors. So, one night we can see from the graph. So, it helps us now we can see that how the analysis part and how the representation of the uh, results is being done here effectively. So, we can see with the help of the graph very very quickly and easily that majority of people uh, spend two nights in Uttarakhand. Now, there may be several reasons may, may be they are not getting enough holidays from their office or may be uh, they want to go to some other state later on. But uh, the data says that two nights is the uh, general or majority of people spend two nights here followed by one night and then maybe three nights and other things. And also we can see in the result section 
again that what is the age group of the visitors. So, here we can see that 35 to 44 uh, year olds uh, is you know forms the uh, major block of the visitors to Uttarakhand. So, in the secondary research that was conducted, so we can see that what are the uh, other websites that exist. So, uh, now because we cannot uh, reinvent the wheel, so we have to uh, design a website that will cater to something more, it will cater something special. So, now uh, these other websites that she has researched, we can see that she has also written that what was missing from this or some of the salient points. So, it is less, but efficiently categorized like for example, the incredible India uh, website, it gives uh, language support and it mainly targets the international tourists. So, it is basically uh, like doing a small case study to understand that what are the uh, positive aspects or uh, you know which can be used, we can also use them and what are the challenges or problems that we will need to avoid when we are designing our own work. Similarly, she has looked at the Moroccan, uh, Morocco tourism, so where no translator is on the website, it is not impactful for the foreign tourists and uh, there is no variation in the itinerary. So, so now since we may want uh, and it is actually quite true because that international tourists visit uh, India in large numbers and that is also one of the major areas of uh, resource that we gather from, from tourism, it is a big industry in India. So, we would obviously want to cater to the needs of the international visitors also and it is also true, I mean we may have experience in our own lives as well that when we are travelling to a foreign location, you know any other country or any other state where we do not have the same type of uh, language that we use or uh, the culture is different, then there are certain challenges that people uh, come across. So, similarly you can take a look at all of the other studies that she conducted. So, when the user interviews were conducted, so uh, she has put together some of the salient features or outcomes from these uh, interviews, where for example, we will take quickly one or two important points here that one person Webhub says that I often find difficult to plan the trip, what to explore and what not. So, there is no categorization of tourist places, what and when to visit. The other uh, female traveler, she says that I find difficulty to find washrooms and safe resting spots while traveling. So, it gets hectic to plan a safe trip. So, here we can see for her the hygiene is very important, identifying washroom is very important, planning a safe trip with the family is very important and similarly, so we can pick out those points, we can pick out the pain points and uh, you know points that people look forward to when they are traveling. So, what will make their experience of traveling very fruitful and positive? So, how can we then incorporate those uh, in uh, our work as well? So, now we have uh, created the how might we statement. Now, how might we questions are basically a brainstorming technique which is used to reframe problems or challenges into opportunities for creative problem solving. So, these questions encourage innovative thinking and they open up possibilities for generating new ideas and solutions. And the structure of a uh, how might we question typically follows a certain format wherein we after how might we, we insert a verb and then a target user or a group and then solve a problem or meet a need. For example, how might we design an interactive application for Uttarakhand tourism industry or how might we give users a healthy community of travellers. So, once we have identified uh, several of these how might we questions, because they are now telling us about the problems or challenges in a very uh, clear uh, fashion. So, now we can create a problem statement out of these how might we statements. So, here the problem statement that Soumya has identified is that designing an application for the Uttarakhand tourism industry that helps users discover the 
undiscovered and focuses on customizable itinerary reviews and participatory discussions of users to create a healthy community of travelers. So, for different uh, problem or different need the how might we questions will change and the problem statement will accordingly also change. So, now since we have the problem statement we know the point, uh, pain points we know what we are wanting to offer. So, now we are creating a persona. So, we have seen in the previous lectures that persona is a fictitious uh, character and here Saurav Sharma who is 25 year old software engineer this persona has been created. So, uh, now we can see that what are his goals when it comes to uh, traveling and what are the frustrations that he faces. So, let us take a look at the frustrations. So, crowded tourist spots unaware of local culture and practices and having a demanding work schedule and willingness to travel. So, these are the frustrations, but goals are visiting somewhere peaceful, visit solo or with close friends and scenario. So, now we have created the scenario. So, if you recall the previous lectures, we have created a persona, then we created a uh, uh, you know uh, scenario and that helped us to identify the goals of the person or the scenario or, or the persona sorry. So, now the scenario here is that Saurav has a long uh, weekend next month and wishes to explore the valley of flowers national park in Uttarakhand and uh, he wants to make the most of his three day trip. So, now looking at the scenario, so we can again uh, refine the goals of this particular uh, persona. Now, affinity mapping, so we have uh, seen affinity uh, mapping earlier as well. So, it is a, a technique which is used in brainstorming and uh, where collaborative ideation sessions are organized and we categorize the ideas or information into meaningful groups. So, uh, now the sticky notes generally are used here, they are most effective. So, we use sticky notes wherein we uh, uh, you know data points are put on those sticky notes and then they are arranged or group based on their similar features. So, here we can see that different headings are given like booking. So, under booking we have itinerary, we have hotels, we have flight, accommodation, under uh, filters we have. So, of course, you may have seen other applications also or websites where for example, we are shopping for something. So, there are several filters that are there. So, we can filter our choice. So, for example, if I wear a size uh, 5 shoe, then what is the point of looking at shoes which are uh, 7 or 8. So, then I will filter my option and look for only a size 5 shoe. So, similarly here also like what could the user may be looking for. So, they may be looking for deals, special deals or they may be looking at certain specific time of departure or arrival or uh, also the crowd ratio or whether it is uh, safe for women, children. So, several of these things. So, so now how this map was put together. So, uh, we have discussed earlier also, but we can now see because uh, you know an example is in front of us. So, here we uh, the first step is for generating the pool of ideas or the data points like popular destination. Uh, blogs. So, they could all probably have been mixed up, but now we are you know we are writing one idea per note and we are putting it on the board or on the white uh, board or on the wall. So, whatever is available to us. So, basically a large surface. So, where we can see them and we can also easily move them around and then we uh, you know based on the commonalities or common features and connections between the different ideas which may have certain similarities, themes or certain patterns. So, then we group them into, uh, into a group. Now, each group can be given a label or a heading. So, here we can see things to do, accessibility. So, now under this broad heading all the other requirements are clubbed together. So, then we can refine, we might feel that you know culture will come somewhere else, maybe it will come in some other uh, heading. So, we will move and do the fine refinement and then finally, we can uh, analyze 
the uh, the final map for patterns that are emerging from the groupings and they can help in decision making and guide us further in our explorations. So, now this is the information architecture that has been created for this website. So, so now we can see that once the user has landed, so there are certain information available to him like feed, search, messages, help and support. So, this is an example of a basic information architecture. So, which is basically the process of organizing, structuring and labeling the information that makes it intuitive and easy to navigate for users. So, like we discussed in the last uh, class also that it has a certain hierarchy within a system. So, the information is presented in a logical sequence. So, uh, organization and structure is important because this involves defining the main categories, subcategories and the overall hierarchy. Then the next thing is also the navigation uh, design. So, how do we design the menus, navigation bars and other navigational elements to support easy movement for the user and how the user can orient himself in the space. And then uh, uh, another important is the uh, search functionality. So, how can users search for specific information within the system in a user friendly manner and they do not get frustrated in this process. And also the user flows which uh, involves understanding the user goals, identifying critical paths and designing clear paths for users to achieve their objectives. So, in plan uh, a trip we can see here that we have itinerary, we have accommodation, we have custom uh, travel guide and under that in the uh, in the booking section we have hotels, hostel, cabs. So, there are several options available for the user to choose from. So, this is a, a user flow diagram. So, a user flow uh, diagram is also known as a user journey. So, this is a visual representation of the steps and interactions that a user will take while he is using a system, website or it could be an application. So, it maps out the path a user follows from the initial entry point through the various screens, actions and decision points until the desired outcome is achieved. And the main purpose of this uh, flow diagram is to understand and visualize the user's journey, allowing designers and stakeholders to identify potential pain points and some areas where certain more improvements may be required in the user experience. Now, for a B.Tech or M.Tech or whatever uh, course uh, we are studying, so we are uh, required to you know submit a thesis. So, in that thesis we have a flow chart, if you recall there is a starting point, then how will we go next, will there be primary study involved, secondary study, we will read papers, books or we will go and talk with people, we will conduct interviews, then how will this all come together, so that is also an example of a flow chart. So, that helps. Uh, the user or the, the reader understand that how this person has conducted his or her research. So, how this thesis has been organized. If we place all the information haphazardly, then the person who is reviewing our thesis will be lost. But when it is placed in a logical sequence, so it makes it easy for the reader to understand that what was the aim of the study and how we proceeded with our objectives and methodology and how we achieved the final goal. So, this is very similar in that fashion. So, now once uh, we have the user flows, we have uh, done our basic study, we come to the wireframe uh, exploration. So, wireframes are uh, visual representations or blueprints that outline the structure, layout and basic functionality of a digital interface or a product. So, uh, as I discussed a little bit earlier also that at this stage we are not really concerned with the details or with the aesthetics, but we are uh, concerned with the skeleton of our work. So, these are at this stage they are low fidelity uh, designs and they are simple black and white, they could be grayscale, and they have simple shapes and placeholders just to show that what will come where like an image will come here. So, we leave a space, but we probably will not put a image there, but the because the main purpose of wireframe is to 
communicate and validate the layout organization and the flow of the information within a user interface. So, the wireframes uh, provide us with a very clear visualization of the structure hierarchy and how the uh, elements that are there, what kind of relationship they have within uh, themselves. So, here in this example, we can see that uh, uh, there is a top bar or the header and the, the logo will come on the left, then there will be certain uh, buttons for navigation and then in the middle part, we see that there is some uh, communication happening. On the right panel, we see there is a chat and on the left panel, we see some other uh, information there. So, this is one wireframe which is exploring that how the final design may appear like. Now, the uh, wireframes are further uh, explored in this stage. So, uh, you can see that these boxes with crosses, some images maybe they will come here. So, now uh, on the right, the discover portal, here also we can see that the designer is thinking of placing a map somewhere, so that one can find that how uh, much far away a particular activity is, if they are planning to uh, take uh, an activity in their free time. So, again this is another wireframe for planning the itinerary, that what will the person do on day 1, day 2 and how can the website offer this uh, traveler with an itinerary. Because sometimes like we saw in the user interviews that people say that it is a very time taking process or they do not they don't know what to do when uh, you know they are visiting some place. So, uh, now the designer here is considering uh, giving that option to the uh, you know travellers that they can choose an itinerary day 1 you can visit place A, B, C, day 2 uh, you can visit this. So, that they have a very uh, comfortable um, experience and also the cognitive loading that we have discussed earlier that how important it is to consider the cognitive load. So, even that is taken care of. Now, usability tests and uh, insights. So, we have seen that this is a method used to evaluate the usability and user experience of a product, system or a website. So, we do this by observing how real users interact with it. And uh, the primary goal is to uh, find any usability issues, uh, also to gather the feedback of the users and make any decisions to improve the overall experience. So, here we can see that uh, in the small images, uh, if you can see that the designer is conducting some of these usability tests with the users. And here some questions that maybe the user is asking that they are not able to find answers for that how does post appear on the feed or how and whom do I need to follow or what if I want to share my post to some other social media. So, these might be some questions that the designer did not consider uh, in the initial stage. So, now this gives them a little bit of a direction that oh, I missed this uh, information like for example, discover section looks pretty good, but its placement on the website uh, on the web page looks off. So, now the designer uh, may also agree with that opinion of the user and may considering changing the direction. So, these uh, this is an example of how for this particular uh, exercise, these questions uh, came up when the user testing was going on. So, now once the testing is done, so uh, like we discussed in the previous uh, lecture that now we will come up with the final wireframe. So, now we can see that the heading in top header and the side navigation bar are divided, so that the user can get better access, he can quickly uh, access the navigation bar. Then some breadcrumbs for website navigation is added. So, we can see here that there is a feed and then we have an arrow and a discover. So, now the user will know that where is he or she in that entire website. So, they can always track their steps. So, they know that okay, I entered the feed and went to discover, then I went to this stage. So, just like uh, breadcrumbs and then enhance the landing page feed section and the topic scroll. So, some other improvements were also done like some discover button was uh, uh, added or groups were added. 
So, all of these changes were made based on the usability testing. So, this is uh, now a page or you can say the wireframe when group needs to be created with the friends to plan a trip. So, we can see that this is the DOD Department of Design Trekkers Club and how you know some discussion has started and then the other uh, friends are also uh, contributing uh, to the discussion started by Shravani here on this page. Similarly, the map to help users locate nearby places where you know they can go for a local uh, cafe, restaurant or maybe a holy spot or washroom. So, how can they identify uh, some of the common facilities? Then trending topics based on the occasion. So, uh, what so there may be some certain occasion or activity for which there may be some discussion going on, some trending discussion. So, so one person has started and then how the other can follow. Okay, and maps to help users uh, locate nearby places like local cafes, uh, restaurants, parks or washrooms. So, this will help them uh, access them uh, easily these facilities, they can see themselves where they are on the map and then they can also see how far away they are from the uh, facility that they are looking for. So, now this is the mind map, mind mapping technique. So, mind mapping uh, technique is a visual uh, technique which is used to organize and represent the information, ideas or concepts in a hierarchy. So, we have discussed this also in the previous uh, lecture. So, I will quickly summarize this mind mapping technique where we start with a central idea. So, we begin by identifying a central uh, idea topic uh, or problem that we want to understand better and then we branch out from here to create branches which are radiating you know outwards and each branch uh, represents a main uh, category subtopic which is related to the main topic. So, finally, we add sub branches or nodes. So, for each main branch further we expand by adding sub branches or nodes. So, we can use uh, visual elements like colors, icons, images or symbols to enhance the visual appeal and make these connections. So, once all that work wherein the wireframes and mapping has been done, so now we are coming to a visual identity that how will our uh, final design appear to be like. So, visual identity refers to the visual elements that represent a brand or organization and they create a consistent and recognizable visual presence. So, we use uh, design elements like logos, typography, colors and other uh, visual elements that work together to communicate the brand's uh, personality and its values and messages to the audience that we are designing it for. So, here we can see that how the, the, the color, uh, the mood board, the color palette has been decided how the, the text is being explored, the font is being explored, that what will go well with this particular uh, imagery. So, this is and then what kind of images, so collection of these photos that uh, will be attractive will help the users see that what they are getting into. So, in the uh, one of the previous lectures we have discussed about this uh, particular point that how images are a very you know important way of communicating to the user and uh, making it a very desirable uh, component. So, after this uh, the logo is also an important uh, aspect here. So, the designer has explored this process by uh, generating and exploring different uh, design concepts. So, they have taken certain uh, flora and fauna or some types of uh, symbols. Now, when these elements uh, typography colors uh, you know and these are put together. So, they create some impactful and unique logos. So, so this uh, probably is the final version of the uh, logo. Now, brand personality just like you know we all have a, a personality, humans have a personality. So, the brand also may have a personality of its own. So, this refers to the human characteristics and qualities that are associated 
with a band. So, it is a set of traits, values and attributes that shape how the brand is perceived by its target audience. So, just like we all have, we humans have individual uh, personalities. So, uh, brands also, you know, can cultivate distinct personalities, unique personalities to, dis uh, to differentiate themselves and connect with consumers on an emotional level. So, we can see here that in this graph where this x y axis where we have unfriendly to friendly and dominant to sub uh, submissive. So, we can see that uh, this particular brand trait falls on in this quadrant where it is uh, dominant, it is not submissive where it is you know not taking a strong step in guiding the user here for example, but it is at the same time friendly. So, it is helping make the user make a certain decision, but in a, a friendly and uh, user centered manner. So, now here you can see that uh, uh, some interesting colorful photos have been put and this is you know all the features that will be there like it is for friends, uh, family, it is for exploring recommendation reviews. And so, finally, once uh, we are done with uh, that part, then the user interface exploration will begin. So, user interface exploration refers to the process of experimenting with different visual designs and interface elements which create uh, user friendly interfaces. So, here we will you know uh, explore various design concepts, layouts, uh, typography and uh, some other interactive elements which and we will find that which is the most effective and which is the most aesthetically pleasing. So, the main goal of this exploration is to create an interface that is not only appealing visually, but it also supports the usability and funct uh, the functional requirements of the product or application. So, here we can see that the designer has explored the different types of you know how the hover function uh, will work here. So, once they click here, then they may be able to uh, see this at what exactly is in the number 11. Similarly, here also on the topics, so it expands to become you know offer, create post, add topic, all of these uh, facilities and uh, similarly in groups. So, then there are several groups that can be visible. Now, uh, here also we can see that the designer is exploring the the next uh, uh, user interface exploration that how the ch the chat function uh, probably may function how will people communicate with each other and then here say the the footer what all information will come in the footer here then how will somebody sign up so what all information will be required where will this uh, space pop up from so all of those things the designer is working out here so, how to organize the chats? So, now the landing page, so where create a post and view posts based on topic and people you follow. So, there is also a function or a facility for someone to follow a uh, traveler. So, there are people who uh, you know have the entire career made out of traveling. So, maybe somebody like that and we look you know uh, look up to that person that this person goes to very you know interesting places which have not been explored. So, maybe we want to follow this person. So, it all also allows us to follow uh, this person and so how can we create the post and view the posts and categorize our information which can be easily accessible. Then uh, continuing with this that for example, here the automatic slider. So, this will keep on displaying that what are the prominent uh, features, uh, what are the prominent features. Then here in the discover section that what uh, Uttarakhand has to offer. So, on hover this interaction will work. So, once we uh, uh, you know hover here, then we will get some more information and posts from we can also add posts from the Instagram handle. So, a lot of flexibility has been provided here, so that the user can link their several of their uh, you know handles and uh, make it a very interactive and personalized space. Now, here we can see that what is trending this week, this has been shared and how people are communicating 
maybe some uh, new uh, some occasion is happening maybe there is some kind of a festivity in the state and people would want to uh, you know go and uh, visit uh, so some other similarly some other ways that how we are hovering and then what is happening how things are opening up like for example this we want to see the uh, who is this person so when we hover on this we get a uh, more uh, expanded information about this particular user so features like this or the map so now if one wants to add some location so they can add uh, you know uh, some other information and these uh, drop down menus will give more options so all these details have been worked out so for the itinerary that how can we uh, create plan the uh, trip for the users then coming to the uh, ui exploration 3 so now this is another exploration where they have explored you know uh, different types of uh, illustrations taking inspiration from these uh, natural images and coming up with uh, more illustrations and then uh, this is the landing page where uh, we can see that how some of these illustrations are taken the inspiration is taken from the nature of Uttarakhand and uh, here uh, as well we have uh, taken inspiration this is the logo that we started with so it has changed a little bit of its uh, final shape and previously what we were exploring here these uh, these particular illustrations now they have converted into unconventional button designs so uh, we are not used to probably seeing such buttons but then we are trying to integrate nature uh, or the elements of nature here so now these will act as the buttons so today we uh, saw this case study that how now all of this data that we gathered the insights that we got from the user and also the other explorations that we started uh, about the user needs user goals and then coming on to the board starting with the group activity with our brainstorming and ideation exercise and then going on to the paper and pencil and then preparing the low fidelity prototype testing it high fidelity so we saw today the example of the case study that how it will appear when all of it is put together and then finally once we are satisfied and there are no bugs or there are no inconsistencies or there are no issues or uh, challenges that the user is facing while using it then we can go ahead and develop it so that it can be accessible uh, by the uh, uh, public. So, uh, we will stop here today. I will see you in the next class. Thank you.